On physical exam, the patient is a well-appearing female with lymph nodes in multiple regions, but otherwise chest exam is clear, no organomegaly on palpation. In regards to lymph nodes, she has bilateral axillary nodes that are approximately two centimeters in size. The remaining lymph nodes, other than a groin lymph node, are quite small. On imaging, including CT of the chest, ab, and pelvis, she has lymph nodes, again, in multiple regions above and below the diaphragm, with the largest being a right groin lymph node, approximately four and a half centimeters, with the remaining lymph nodes less than three centimeters in size. So this patient undergoes an excisional right groin lymph node biopsy, revealing uh, abnormal lymphocytes characterized as small cleave cells intermixed with some larger cells. The phenotype reveals a CD10 positive, CD20 positive um, B cell lymphoma with a classic translocation 1418, all consistent with the diagnosis of follicular lymphoma. This is an elderly patient. Uh, the typical age at presentation is around 60 to 62 years of age. This patient is immune suppressed, being on methotrexate for an underlying history of um, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, in terms of presentation, we see a typical presentation with palpable lymph nodes, but the absence of other worrisome symptoms such as weight loss, night sweats, or substantial fatigue. In regards to the approach, this patient still needs to be staged. We generally are recommending a bone marrow biopsy in, additional to, in addition to imaging studies. The most recent Lugano criteria, which describes for clinicians how to work up a newly diagnosed lymphoma patient, describes whether or not there's still utility in pursuing bone marrow biopsies, given that PET will oftentimes pick up extra nodal involvement. But we're reserving those criteria recommendations for the aggressive lymphomas. So generally speaking, for our low-grade lymphomas, we're still incorporating a bone marrow biopsy for the initial staging workup. In regards to whether or not we should include a PET as part of the initial workup, we are advising that for patients with a newly diagnosed follicular lymphoma because we have learned that these lymphomas are generally PET avid. And again, the current Lugano criteria advises a PET at diagnosis, and it's also carrying prognostic information at the end of therapy. In regards to choosing a management strategy for a newly di diagnosed follicular lymphoma patient, we often rely on our clinical criteria because there is great heterogeneity in terms of how we approach these patients. It, the first discussion I have with a newly, uh, newly diagnosed follicular lymphoma patient is quite broad, encompassing not only their diagnosis but also the natural history of the disease, which we currently consider to be upwards of 20 years or longer, incorporating our more modern therapies and the outcomes that are improving. Um, but the general approach can be as vast as observation to intensive chemoimmunotherapy. It's often challenging for clinicians and for patients to grasp that concept that that is both acceptable in specific circumstances. The general criteria we use when we decide a patient is a candidate for observation is based on the GELF criteria, which have been retrospectively identified using criteria that were mostly generated in the era of chemotherapy, but still in the modern era where we're using more immune-based therapies, we believe these criteria to still be applicable. So generally, when we're looking for criteria that will identify a patient as a candidate for observation, and this patient has many of them, we're looking at the extent of the disease, which is usually determined by imaging studies, meaning they have lymph nodes over three centimeters, including three or more, or one lymph node over seven centimeters in size, whether or not they have splenomegaly, which again, we're usually radiographically defining, whether or not they have um, effusions, including pleural effusions or ascites, whether or not they have a possible obstruction that may occur as a result of a lymph node in a given location. Oftentimes this can be derived from an imaging modality, such as CT or PET. There are other criteria that we also will evaluate, including the blood counts, hemoglobin, platelets, neutrophil count, the LDH, whether or not that is elevated. And generally what I describe to patients is we're not looking for all of those criteria, but one would be an indication that it's no longer appropriate to observe that patient. If they have none of those symptoms or objective findings, then observation is still absolutely appropriate in the modern era because we know their life expectancy will not be hindered by observing until they meet one of those criteria. We also know that about two to three percent of patients will have spontaneous regression of their disease in the absence of therapy, and we could have spared them the side effects or potential side effects of therapy. So those are usually the criteria we apply when we're discussing with a newly diagnosed patient whether or not they're appropriate candidates for observation or treatment.
And this patient appears to have no or none of the GELF criteria, so I do believe this would be an appropriate candidate for observation.